How you doing, Dr. Ulysses Jackson? Welcome back to another Mental Health Monday. Well, today on Mental Health Monday, we're going to discuss being an introvert and being alone. How we came up with this topic was a lot of people that I talk to on a regular basis, they say things like, I don't mess with him. Or I don't mess with her. Or I just like being alone. Those aren't bad things to say, but we have to kind of define, how do we get to this point? Why don't you mess with anybody? Why don't you mess with him or her? Or why don't you go around people? Sometimes it's a reason why somebody don't do that. You know, I have my reasons and you have yours. But let's look at some, 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 some characteristics that go with when someone's an introvert or they just like to be alone. First of all, you might be a person who likes to be quiet and you're reserved. And that's the opposite of an extrovert where you want to be out. You want to be the life of the party. You want to be seen. You want to be upfront. You want to be involved. You want to be on the go. Those are outgoing traits. But today we're not going to talk about an extrovert. We're talking about the introvert that kind of relishes on being by themselves, being more reserved and with themselves. So when you, when you talk about being alone and kind of being an introvert, this could mean that a person is more comfortable being by themselves or with very few people. It doesn't mean that it's really an issue. You know, it's not an issue until it becomes an issue. So a lot of times I might find, you know, my girlfriend, my partner, whatever, she might be at work, my son is in school, my daughters are working. And I might have long, extensive times where I'm alone. I'm not doing no clinical notes. I'm not doing anything that um, is taking up too much of my time. So I have some time alone, watch a nice movie, um, you know, read a book, do something that entails me being with me and getting comfortable with me. So every time when you're not in the crowd or on the go and you're not invited to every party and you're not every, at every party, it's not a bad thing, man. You get to, you know, we spend eight hours sleeping, they say. Eight hours working, that's 16 right there. Come on. And we got family and friends in our social life. <laughs> it gets to a point where, where is the you time? Some of us may want to be alone because past experience. That caused trauma. That caused us to not trust people. You might be like, you know what? Every time I'm with him or I'm with her or I'm with them, I get burnt on the deal. So I'd rather, you know, start to be alone. You know what I'm saying? So it could be a lack of trust for other people. Or if you're coming from a younger stage in your life, it could have been some type of trauma or abuse that you just wasn't, you know, you wasn't feeling, you know? Um, so that's another way to look at things where it could have been some type of trauma or abuse that affected you in a, in a negative way. Other than that, it could also be you're emotionally sensitive. What's going to be an emotionally sensitive? It's just that you connect with people and they need, yo, I'm having a bad day. Yo, my job is crazy. You know, yo. And then, and then it's like they draw you in. So sometimes you might say, I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to be involved in they, in they stuff it's today. It's nine o'clock. I don't want to be involved in what they're doing right now. Just know what, I'm, I'm good on that. You know, I'm a chip. You know what I'm saying? Because you're emotionally sensitive to when you hear things and it becomes exhausting. You know what I'm saying? We call them sometimes emotional vampires. Where you say, when I know when I talk to him or I know when I talk to her, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be an issue because I'm going to feel drained. So when we run in a situation like that, sometimes we say, I want to be home or I want to be alone. Or the person can have a history of toxic relationships. It's like every time I go out, we get into something or she get into something or he get into something. It's always an issue. It's always a problem. So sometimes we might not want that drama in our lives. So we're going to kind of back up from that and say, I'm going to just chill. So these are reasons why sometimes we're not out. We don't just go out too much. We're like, I'm not going to run out there and just be with a bunch of people. I'm going to chill by myself. Again, you could be mentally exhausted, avoiding emotional vampires, and also you could have a continuous dysfunctional relationship that didn't work out. 
But you find yourself with this one and with that one. I happen to come from my characteristics is I'm like Chucky. I'm a friend to the end. Because what I'm going through personally, when I share that with you, if I hear it back in the street or it goes around, I'm real sensitive to that. You know what I'm saying? So I like to keep my circle small. And the less you know about my personal, intimate life, the better off I'm going to be and the better off you're going to be because me and you ain't going to never have no issue. So being alone and being an introvert, it's not a problem. Not an issue unless you ain't getting an issue. Next we have, well, what is the difference between being an introvert and having social anxiety? And as I get ready to get into defining what social anxiety is, I'm going to just say the disclaimer again. This is an informational discussion. When I'm sharing my thoughts and my experiences on a topic, you might be able to grow from. This is not to be taken for anything clinical or in place of treatment. So the disclaimer is, do not take this as treatment or as a guide to some type of diagnosis. But we will discuss what is the DSM-5 definition of social anxiety. It's a mental condition where social interaction causes anxiety. So again, we're going to say that again. Social anxiety is a mental condition which causes social inter interactions someone to experience extreme anxiety. So now every time you go around people, you get anxious. You're very anxious. You know, it, it's, it's getting to a point where when I'm around them or I'm in that crowd, I get anxious. It's a difference between being an introvert and social anxiety. Two different things. Now, we may hear a person say, I don't want to mess with these people, or I'd rather just be at home. Are these traits of being an introvert or are these traits of social anxiety? This is where we say seek out professional, you know, per, you know, professional advice on that. Because if being alone prevents you from doing basic stuff like going to school, going to work, so social engagement limited to some things, and your education, that could be a problem. So sometimes people come back home from incarceration, a long stage in which they was involved with a lot of people. And they might say, you know what? I'm going to take this time for me. So understand a person's social engagement. Understand where a person's coming from. What makes them like that? You know, they could have been in an abusive marriage where they couldn't go out. And now they want to go out and be an extrovert and be the life of the party. They mean somebody that's studying for a test, trying to get a license. Trying to get their masters, completing a degree, getting a trade. They get shut down for that time. You know, someone that now is a new father, a new mother, and being home. So it's different traits that bring you to say, you know what, I'm a chill. It ain't no way that I came home from jail or I'm a, I have social anxiety. But it's also comfortable when you get to know who you are. Knowing your neighbor, knowing your partner, beautiful thing. But when you get to know you, it's a different ball game. So again, responding to this, if you feel like you want to be alone and, and not want to be with someone, and you're on the fence, whether or not this is social anxiety or, or you're just an introvert, seek professional advice. Be like, you know, am I, am I being a little extreme? You know, not want to go out? Man, I, I, I got to go out tonight. I'm going to go to the club. I'm going to go to the comedy club. I'm going to take my girlfriend. I'm going to do something else. Take my boyfriend out. I'm going to take my partner. Whatever your situation is, evaluate that. You know, why you're home, why you're alone. You know, again, if you experience or you believe that you have a diagnosis for social anxiety, please seek some professional help. For this criteria that you go through. Again, being home alone is not a problem. But define those reasons for that. And when you say, I don't mess with people, it's not a problem. It's not a bad thing to be alone. Not a bad thing going on. So the issue arises, the issue arises when there's absolutely no interaction with other people or persons from the outside world. And you experience extreme anxiety. Now, relationships are affected, your occupation is affected, your social life's affected, your education is affected. Now it's extreme. Now you really need to seek some type of help when you feel trapped, where you just don't want to go out. So understand the difference between being an introvert and an extrovert. You know what I'm saying? 
and so what social anxiety is. So today we just discussed Mental Health Monday with it's okay to be alone. Don't be too extreme. And find your balance on why you want to be alone. Again, this is Dr. Ulysses Jackson. Thank you for sharing this time with me. If you're on that YouTube channel, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and give your suggestions because every Monday we have a Mental Health Monday on a topic that you discuss or that you want to discuss with me. Thanks again for showing up today for another Mental Health Monday. Dr. Ulysses.